Hey y'all, welcome back to another week's worth of what's for dinner. This week I'm going to be sharing four super easy soup ideas with y'all. It has been colder weather here in Georgia, so I was feeling all the soup vibes. And if you are new here, my name is Bethany or Budget Bethany, and I like to share these every single week and hopes to give y'all some easy meal ideas to cook for your family as well. So the very first soup we're going to be making is cheeseburger soup and this is the very first time I ever made this soup and my husband has already requested me to make it again and all you'll need is a block of Velveeta cheese or the Great Value brand cheese, a block of cream cheese and then whatever kind of seasonings that you want to season up your pound of ground beef with. So right here as you can see I got my ground beef browned in my pan and I just seasoned it up and I'll insert another little clip right here for y'all so y'all can see what kind of seasonings that I'm using but it's your kitchen so you use whatever kind of seasonings that you prefer. <laughs> You will also need some chicken broth, but I was out, so I just decided to boil some water with a few of these chicken bouillon cubes in there, and that worked just as fine. So once I got my ground beef browned up, I drained all the grease off of it, and then I dumped that chicken bouillon water or chicken broth into there. And then I just kind of put it on a low simmering heat while I added in my cheeses. So I cut my Velveeta block of cheese and my cream cheese block up into little chunks. That just helps with the melting process so the cheese will melt faster. Then once I got all my cheeses added in there, I did turn my heat up a little bit to about medium high heat. That way the cheese would hurry up and melt. Also, I did continuously stir it just so that my cheeses or nothing like that was scorching. But once I got all the cheese almost melted down, I decided to wash, peel, and boil some potatoes. And then once the potatoes were done and soft, I just added those into my soup. And then here's how it looked once it was all done. Like I said, this was really good and my husband has already requested it again. So I'll be cooking it again soon in the future. Up next, we're going to be making some Brunswick stew, and I actually made this soup a little bit different than what I normally do, and I'm using two fresh pork butts, y'all. Yes, fresh pork butts. It's one that we actually had um, processed that my husband had killed and everything like that, so I just boiled it in my pot, and once it was done, I removed it from my pot, and then I just kind of left all the juices in there that cooked off of the meat. And then I'm going to add in my vegetables and I usually only add like corn and green beans and tomatoes and a little bit of ketchup and hot sauce. But this time I decided I wanted to switch it up a little bit. So I decided to add some of these vegetable blends or cans of vegetable blends and it has like carrots and green beans and sweet peas and you know all that good old stuff. And I also um, peeled and washed some potatoes and boiled those separate and then I just added those in there. I just, I just find that it works best that way. You know that that way the potatoes are cooked like they're supposed to be then once i added all my vegetables into my pan i just shredded up my meat and then i throw that in there as well Now we do like our Brunswick stew on a little bit of the spicier side as well as a little bit of the barbecue-y side if that's if that's a word anyway. So I did add a little bit of hot sauce and some barbecue sauce but you do not have to do that to each their own. But here was my Brunswick stew once it was all done. Alright y'all so up next we're going to be making some catfish stew and I'm sure a lot of my viewers, a lot of y'all that are watching today have never had catfish stew. I feel like it's probably a southern thing but I, I could be wrong. But anyway to start with all I did was wash and dice and peel potatoes and I had those boiling so once they were almost done I added in three cans of evaporated milk so as you can see I'm opening up the milk and I'm going to pour those into my pan or my pot <laughs> All right, y'all, so right here I have two big old catfish fillets. If y'all are new here, my husband is a hunter and a fisherman, so we have plenty of deer meat or venison and fish, all kinds of types of fish in our freezer, so I decided I was going to use this catfish. You probably could use tilapia or whatever kind of fish that you can find at your market, but this is what I'm using, so I just cut it up into little chunks, and this is behind the scenes of what life is like whenever I'm trying to film dinner with kids. He didn't know that I was filming. He didn't have a shirt on, so he was trying to peep around me to see what I was doing and what I was cooking. So anyway, back to original broadcast them <laughs> once i got all my fish cut up into little chunks i'm going to season it up and i'm just using some lemon pepper some black pepper some garlic powder some onion powder and what else did i have some old bay i believe so 
Of course, you can use whatever kind of seasonings that you prefer. I always tell y'all that. So I'm just seasoning up my fish. And then once I get all my fish seasoned up, I'm going to dump it into the pan that or the pot that I cook my potatoes in. And then obviously I'm just adding the fish into the pot with the potatoes as a kid walked in the background still with no shirt on. <laughs> but anyway, once I got all my fish added into the pot with the milk and the potatoes, I just kind of stir it around and the seasonings will come off the fish, but it's fine. It's going to be flavored or flavoring in your soup, which is what you're looking for. You know, you want your soup to taste good. The fish will taste fine as well as it's cooking in the juices and everything. It'll absorb it. And then I just poured in a little bit of lemon juice. I didn't really measure it. I just poured in what I had, but I would probably say about two or three tablespoons. And then I added in a block of butter and here was my soup. Once it was all done, I just sprinkled on a little bit more black pepper as well as some hot sauce. <music> Last minute I decided to crack in a few saltine crackers into my soup and that's how I ate it. And then moving into the very last dinner for this week, we're going to be making a roast with potatoes and carrots and gravy. And we're going to serve that over a bit of rice. And we're also going to have a yeast roll on the side. So all you'll need is a roast. I've got that in the bottom of my crock pot. We're going to season that roast up with all these seasonings that you see right here. As well as dump in a can of cream of mushroom and a little bit of the, or the whole packet of the onion soup mix. That helps make the gravy that's going to be for your, you know, your gravy, potatoes and carrots. So basically right here, I've got my roast in my crock pot and I'm going to dump in all of those ingredients as well as season up my meat meat <laughs> y'all y'all just don't understand even though i've been doing this for a few years sometimes i still get nervous and i feel kind of rushed to try to keep up with the clips and also i try to make sure that i'm pronouncing everything as clear as i can get it because with this southern draw a lot of the times a lot of y'all that aren't used to hearing someone talk with a southern draw don't understand what we're saying and i get that in my comment section all the time about girl we can't even understand what you're saying would you slow it down and honestly this is just how i talk y'all i'm sorry please forgive me i know it gets on some of y'all's nerves and y'all let me know but <laughs> this is really how i talk and if you're from the south and you know this is what normal people talk like so anyway like i said a lot of times i'm trying to make sure that i'm pronouncing everything as clear as i can get it so that everybody can understand what i'm saying but here in the south y'all this is how everybody talks and everybody understands what we're saying but whenever we talk to someone who doesn't hear the southern draw every day they don't really understand what we're saying a lot of the time, but I'm pretty sure most of y'all, my loyal subscribers, understand exactly where I'm coming from and what I'm saying. And y'all all love this Bethany that y'all get on these What's for Dinners. I'm pretty sure most of y'all are just glad to see me back with a new What's for Dinner, which I'm so very thankful for each and every one of y'all who have stayed while I have been doing this working journey, this working mama journey. It's been crazy. I went from a working kind of like quotation mark single mama my husband was working out of town to him coming back home but still being a working mama and trying to keep up with the house stuff and all that good old stuff so i wanted to say thank you all so very much for staying sticking by my side through thick and thin i love each and every one of y'all but anyway back to this what's for dinner once I got all of my ingredients added in there on top of my roast, I just put that on um, low for five hours, five to six hours. It just depends. Check on it once ever it gets to the five to six marks. I actually put mine on that morning before I went to work. When I come home, it was done. And then I just washed and um, I didn't even peel the potatoes. I just washed them and boiled them. And once they were soft, I dumped them in the crock pot as well as my carrots. I did them the same way. And then I also just boiled a pot of rice put the rice on the plate first, cover it with the gravy, the carrots, and the potatoes, and I also pop in some of the Sister Schubert's yeast rolls into the oven and called it dinner. Dinner was served. So here's how my plate looked once it was all served up. This is always a favorite in our house. 
But y'all, that is all I've got for y'all for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please do not forget to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already because I would really love for you to join my YouTube family. Thank you all so much for being here today. I love each and every one of y'all and I hope you all had a very happy holiday and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye y'all. Even if what we're doing is bad, there's so many emotions.